Well, hello there, good night to you all. So this will now be my review for episode 7 of Kanetsu to Keiji Gifu Dodo uh, called the True Spoken to the Moon and basically this episode picks up when the last one ended with the appearance of the ghost of Oda Nobunaga and kind of meddling in the conversation between uh, Naoi Kanetsugu and Maeda Keiji uh, about uh, Naoi Kanetsugu past and basically um, the, car the ghost of Oda Nobunaga kind of instead of um, they decided instead of uh, we learn their story or we learn the story of Naoi Kanetsugu from the talk that he is having with Maeda Keiji we learn the backstory of Naoi Kanetsugu the stuff related with his birth uh, he, from whom he was son uh, what happened in the past uh, what is the story because he is a illegitimate son of Uesugi Kenshin why that happened uh, and uh, they use the ghost of Oda Nobunaga kind of returning to the world of the living because he, do, he wants to lay some stuff to rest especially because why is plan to destroy the Uezugi in Ishigo did not work and we actually learn more about uh, the past of Naoi Kanetsugu and a little bit about the story of Ishigo uh, that was a province in the time of the uh, Sengoku Jidai and was the home base of the Uezugi family and we well we learned that Naoi Kanetsugu is the illegitimate son of Uezugi Kenshi that was one of the greatest warlords and daimyo from the Sengoku Jidai period um, he ruled the province of Ishigo and other provinces in the northern regions of Honshu the main island of the Japanese uh, archipelago and uh, basically he never have any sons and we learn the reason why they explain this in this episode because for him to have the loyalty of his retainers his vassals he kind of need to make a vow of eternal celibacy or explaining this he could not have any relations with women or having sons or daughters or family and he should only live for his people and for uh, the Bisha Mountain uh, that is the gods of Bisha Mountain and Buddha himself uh, so and he was kind of a holy warrior and he lived for the gods and as that he could not have any sons, daughters, family and such and that it actually did happen um, he, he had a lot of adopted sons but um, it's not very clear if now I can he was in fact a illegitimate son of Uesugi Kenshin or not um, um, I don't know, and even uh, uh, I studied some about this period, and I did not was able to come to a conclusion if this is true or not. I think that is a theory that probably exists that probably now Kanetsugu was a illegitimate son of Uesugi Kenshi, but I don't know. I never found or read anything. Uh, pointing in that way uh, so 
but I do know that Uezugi Genshin never actually have sons, if I'm not mistaken, and he has adopt he adopted several uh, sons from other families because adop adoption was a situation that was used in Japan either to strengthen the relations between rival families, either to ensure the loyalty of a given family or a given vassal or a given retainer or a given ally and such. And we also learned that how Uezugi Kagekatsu that succeeded Uezugi Genshin after, after his death in 1578. What happened between 1578 and 1579, that was a civil war in the Uezugi family between two of the adopted sons of Uezugi Kenshi, Uezugi Kagekatsu once, but uh, he, he was opposed by his brother Uezugi Kagetsuna, I think, uh, and eventually the last one lose, did lose the war and he eventually in the end he committed uh, seppuku or suicide and well we have Oda Nobunaga making some questions and kind of propelling the story forward and through his questions why his plan failed why his objective of turn Ishigo into a war zone uh, why his plan failed and then we have now like an Tsudu explains that he was the son of rightness, rightness and that he was uh, prudent in the way he dealt with the situation and such and eventually he thwarted the plan of Oda Nobunaga to engulf the, the land of Ishio in a war and to make the vassals of Uezugi Kenshin lose the faith in this master, in this daimyo. And that was a very good episode, it was very interesting. It keep, it gave us the backstory of Naoe Kanetsugu. It was very interesting in that way. The way they use the ghost of Oda Nobunaga and his plans to Ishiro was splendidly done. Um, and then we have uh, also uh, the re revelation that Wesley Kagekatsu do those know the connection between Naoe Kanetsu and Wesley Kenshi. Uh, well, it was a very good episode, a very informative episode, and tell us basically the backstory of Naoe Kanetsu through the questions that the ghost of Oda Nobunaga posed to him and to my education. So this was a very interesting episode. We also have or learn or they told us a little more about the story of Ishi and about one of the great warlords of the single Kushidai period, uh we Kenshin. So that was a very interesting episode. So that's it. This is my review for Ifudo do Kanetsugo Tokenji episode 7. Hope you enjoy. Stay well. Peace. See you soon.